Okay, I wanted to go over the exam with you. Uh, first of all, question one, uh, circling the things that could be negative. Exergy or exergy flow both have to be positive just because of the way they're defined. Or how much um, energy is possible to get out of a stream. And so therefore it's always possible to get something or else there is no energy to be had because it's at the dead state. And so therefore this has to always be positive. And same with exergy destruction. It's defined in such a way that it's always a positive quantity that is destroyed. The only one of these that could be negative is the change in exergy across a process. That could be negative, could be positive, could be zero. Now the second question, another quick one, was about uh, pumps. Okay, And the work of a pump can be calculated using the change in enthalpy across it. It is negative because it is work input to the pump. The power is 108. It is required, so it is also negative. But if you divide kilojoules per kilogram, or kilojoules per second, a kilowatt is a kilojoule per second, by kilojoules per kilogram, you'll end up with units of kilograms per second, and the answer is a positive 54 kilograms per second. Now, question three was the difference between air standard assumptions and cold air standard assumptions. So cold air standard is basically everything about air standard, that it's an ideal gas, all of those kinds of things, except for we add to it that the C sub P and C sub V are constant, which would be typical of air at, say, room temperature. So this is going to be appropriate when temperatures are cool, when temperatures aren't changing much. So whatever you assume, it will be fairly much the same everywhere at all states within the cycle. Or we also use this when we just want rough estimates. So maybe I'm doing it just to know a feasibility. Is this design going to be OK or not? Or maybe it's not that I really care about what that number actually is. I just want to be able to compare cycle A to cycle B, in which case cold air standard may be a great assumption. Question four is about gas speeds going through a converging. And then I put nozzle in quotes, indicating that it's a nozzle design. But when the speeds are very high, 400 meters per second is a very large velocity, I need to compare it to the speed of sound for that gas, which in this case was given. Normally, we might need to calculate it as the square root of KRT. So 400 meters per second divided by 300 meters per second means it's 1.3, which is greater than 1, meaning it's supersonic. In supersonic nozzles, the behavior is very odd. But what's going to happen is as the area compresses, the density is changing so rapidly that I actually end up with the velocity decreasing through an increasing area. So the mass in equal mass out is still the same, but the density is no longer constant. So I can't say volume flow rate in equals volume flow rate out, which many of you tried to do on your exams. The last of these short questions was a question about, um, just a whimsical one, um, a book called The Physics of Christmas says that Santa Claus would have to fly at Mach 6395 in order to deliver everything. So I just played around with this, said, OK, well, what if the temperature is 5 degrees C, an average temperature across the entire planet, perhaps on a day in December? and it's air, so 0.287 for R, 1.4 for K seems a very rational value for K at these temperatures. And so I calculated C. Now you've got to remember that to get to meters per second, I need this to be in joules per kilogram, because a joule per kilogram is meter square per second squared. So we end up with a speed of sound of 334 meters per second. The Mach number is 6395, so 6395 times this gives me roughly 2 million meters per second. Fairly fast, I would say. Now we start our long questions. So this is an actual ranking cycle based on an ideal cycle. The ideal cycle data is given. okay? But in this case, the turbine is only 83% efficient. And if we assume that kinetic and potential energy changes are negligible, 
we want to find the actual specific network, the actual exiting enthalpy, and then the change of exergy flow in this cycle. So the work for the ideal turbine is 1398, just by subtracting these two. But the actual turbine is 83% of that value. So take this quantity times 0.83 to get the actual. I should have then added the net, the work of the pump. I just misread my question there. Um, it changes the answer by roughly 6. Okay, So subtracting those two at 6.1. <clears throat> now, to get the enthalpy coming out, I'm going to take H3 minus H4A is the actual work. And so H4A must be 2506. It will be a larger value. And that's something that you really should be aware of, that this exiting enthalpy will be larger than the predicted value for an ideal turbine. Then if I want to look at the exergy flow change. <clears throat> exergy flow change, I can either calculate the exergy of each state, although you'll need the S0 and the H0, but if you leave them in as variables, they'll subtract out. If you go ahead and do the subtracted form, you end up with this kinetic and potential energy changes being negligible, those go away. I end up with H4A minus H, that should say H3. That's kind of hard to read, isn't it? Uh, and then minus T naught, which was 20 degrees C, so 293 Kelvin, times S4A minus S3. And S4A was given. Okay, And so you just get a number there. And you'll notice that this is negative, which if you had gotten this one right, would have helped you go back and fix your answer on part one if you had gotten that wrong. Now, question seven was a cycle that we haven't seen before. It's a variation. We've seen all of the components, but we haven't seen just exactly this one. As an engineer, it's important to be able to think, not just mimic. Okay, So applying numbers to an equation that's already been derived is one skill. But the more important skill is, can you derive your own equation from a set of basic starting equations? And so our basic starting equation is the first law of thermodynamics. And we've studied each of these pieces, but this time I have the material coming out of the boiler into the turbine, all being taken out, passed through a reheater, back into the turbine, and then some of it leaves to go to the open feed water heater, some of it goes to the condenser. And so this splits here, so the mass flow right here is not the same as the mass flow right here. Okay, <clears throat> so now to start working this problem, we want to do several different things. Most of the data is given, but there are some gaps, and we also want to come up with all the mass flow rates and the power of the turbine. Okay, so let's start with all the missing pieces, and I failed to write this one in uh, on the copy that I printed off or scanned for you all. But how am I going to get this information? I'm going to do this by looking at where pressures are constant. So pressures are constant across the flow through a boiler, through the reheater, through the condenser, and in an open feed water heater. So to come up with state 2's pressure, 2, 3, and 8 all will have the same pressure. So 8 is 1.2, meaning this should be 1.2 megapascal, and this should be 1.2 megapascal. Now for pressure 4, well, pressure 4 is coming the inlet to the boiler, so it should be roughly the same as the exit to the boiler, which would make it about 15 megapascals. Similarly, over here for the entropies. <coughs> I actually thought this would be harder, yet more of you got this right than got this correct. So on the entropies, what I have going for me is that the flow through a turbine is constant entropy, unless I take it out and change the entropy. So it's constant entropy as it comes in and flows out. But now then, I've changed it because of the reheater. So S5 and S6 will be the same. So now I bring it in with a new level of entropy coming into 
the turbine for the second phase. And it's going to be split two ways, but it's going to have the same entropy at each of these. So S7, S8, and S9 will all be equal. So how are we going to get the flow rates? To get the flow rates the same way as the examples that we've looked at in class or were in your textbook, you do an energy balance on the open feed water heater. There is no heat transfer and there is no work, so it's just energy in equals energy out. If kinetic and potential energy are negligible, then it's M8 times H8, M2 times H2 is equal to the energy out, M3 times H3. If I set these up so that it came in, it's 200, 200, 200, and now then it splits. This is 200. If I label this one x, this one is 200 minus x, because these two together have to add up to 200. Similarly, this is x. This is 200 minus x, 200 minus x, 200 minus x. I add these two together. x plus 200 minus x equals 200. 200, 200, I've completed my cycle in terms of mass flows. So plugging numbers in, solving for x, I end up with the flow rate in this little slipstream is 36.5 kilograms per second. And in these parts, it's 163.5 kilograms per second. <coughs> so all that's left is to find the power produced in the turbine. Now to do this, I need to consider all of the streams in minus all of the streams out. So I have 5 coming in, 7 coming in, 6, 8, and 9 coming out. I do need to work this with their flow rate. So 5 and 7 came in, 6, 8, and 9 came out. All the data is here now, and so we ended up with 31. Uh, 314,000 kilowatts or 314 megawatts. Question 8. Okay, in question 8, it's a jet engine. Um, in this case, it says a turbine produces just enough power to drive the compressor and no more. So, in other words, the power produced here in this segment, 3 to 4, is exactly equal to, but opposite sign, the power required the compressor 1 to 2. That actually is going to allow me to figure out the temperature here. So I just simply said the work of the turbine, subtract, is equal to the negative work of the compressor, subtract. Solve for HI, I get 250 kilojoules per kilogram. Go to the data table that was provided with the exam. Temperature is 250. The net work, well, no work is produced or required in the diffuser, gas generator, or nozzle. The net work here and here is zero, so the thermal efficiency is zero. The last part was to figure out what the velocity is at the exit of this jet engine. If you know that the velocity at the exit of the turbine is negligible, so V4 is negligible. You don't know anything anywhere else. You have enthalpy data at these other places, but you don't know velocity data. So the appropriate study is across just the nozzle component. So H4 to H5, V4 to V5. So when I look at the first law, I end up with this. There is no heat transfer or work in an ideal nozzle. H5 minus H4, the kinetic energy, the potential energy. Potential energy change is negligible. V4 is negligible. So I can solve for V5. Remember to work with your units. And we get an exiting speed of 593 meters per second. And then the last question. This really is, uh, it's the quiz that we had last week, switched to an auto cycle instead of a diesel cycle. Um, starting temperature and pressure are given, and it's just a matter of going through and playing the game. So I can use ideal gas law to come up with the velocity here. If I know the temperature here, I can get U and V sub R. 
I can use the compression ratio. It's a volumetric compression ratio. So divide V by 7, that ratio, and I'll get V2. Similarly, I can divide VR by 7 and get VR2. If I have VR2, I know anything that's related temperature-wise. So we can approximate that from the table. Get U and T. All right. I can find P from the ideal gas law. <clears throat> V3 equals V2. Okay. V1 equals V4. S1 equals S2 and S3 equals S4 is what allows me to use the volume ratio. I can't use the volume ratio here to here because 2 to 3 entropy is changing. So I can only use this little trick okay, when I've got entropy constant. So, But I have volume, and I was given one other piece of information. In the combustion process, which is 2 to 3, 1,310 kilojoules per kilogram of energy is transferred to the, f to the cycle. Okay? So let's do an energy balance here. That allows me to calculate U3. If I have U3, I can again go to the data tables, get TR, get VR if I wanted that. I don't really need it. We're not completing the problem. And then if I need P3, if I know volume, because this was a constant volume step, I know T because I got it from an energy balance then I'm able to solve for P using the ideal gas law.